Our special guest is Kelly Clark, the most accomplished snowboarder in the world, male or female. Over 60 career half-pipe victories. She's also a two-time Olympic snowboarding medalist who will chase gold once again in 2014, making her fourth appearance as a member of the USA Women's Half-Pipe Snowboarding Team. Thanks for coming, Kelly. Thanks for having me on the show. What do we mean by the term piping? Piping? Well, uh, I compete in half-pipe, so if you ever Which seen... Which is what? If you ever seen skateboarding, essentially it looks like half of a pipe. Um, and it's about 400 feet long, goes down the mountain, and we get between six to seven tricks in, and that's our run in the half pipe. And that's a judgmental factor on the part of the judges, right? Yes, it's a judge sport, so there's five judges. Ten points? Uh, yeah, ten points, that's what you want. You want the ten points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told you were the first member of the team to qualify. Yes, uh, this is my fourth Olympic Games, and um, I've qualified in all different places. I've been the last person on the team, and I decided I wanted to be more prepared, and I wanted to try and be within my ability level to make this team. You know, I don't, I don't want to land the run of my life just to qualify. I want to land the run of my life in Russia. You're the most decorated snowboarder in history. How many, what medals have you won in the Olympics? Uh, I have a gold medal from the Salt Lake City Games in 2002. Uh, I just missed the medals in Italy in 2006. I got fourth, and then I got back up on the podium in Vancouver with a bronze medal. Does it ever get old hat? Uh, snowboarding, it's similar to golf. You're never going to be good at it. You're never going to be perfect. And for me, there isn't a day that I don't go out that I'm not challenged and I don't learn something new. So even though I have, you know, a long list of, of great competition results, uh, I'm never going to arrive. Is every Olympics thrilling? Every Olympics is thrilling. Um, I've essentially grown up through my first Olympics was when I was 18 years old and now I'm 30. And so I can see how I've grown as a person and how I've grown as an athlete. And um, it's been an amazing journey and I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to represent my country again. Is 30 a peak age? Uh, 30 is technically old for snowboarding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would think. Uh, I have an uncharacteristically long snowboard career, and uh, you know, I'm, but I'm, I'm healthy and my, my body's holding up, and that's really what you need. I probably enjoy it more today than I ever have. Does it depend the locale? Does that affect, would Utah be different than Sochi? Uh, every half pipe is different. It every, is. Every snow, snow conditions are different at every different mountain, so we had the opportunity to go last year and we had a test event, we had a World Cup in the actual venue for the half pipe that we'll be riding in February and um, it's long and it's steep so you can carry speed so hopefully the snow conditions won't be such a big factor. In 2011 you completed, I'm told, the first front side 1080 in women's history. What is that? <laughs> You don't know what that is? <laughs> no, I never tried it in Brooklyn. Back in Brooklyn, we didn't do that one. It's uh, essentially three full rotations. So um, it's a trick that the men had been doing for a number of years, and I was the first woman to compete to complete it in competition. So I'm rotating three full times around, landing um, and heading towards the next wall. Why did you take up this sport? Uh, I grew up in a small town in Vermont. My dad had me on skis when I was two. He was kind of a ski bum. and. Uh, you know, I started the first year snowboarding was even allowed at our mountain. I always say I started snowboarding before it was cool. There was no X Games. There was no Olympics. They didn't even want us out there. And I just fell in love with it. There was room for me to be me. There was a culture that went along with it. There was a lifestyle that went along with it. And um, I never actually even wanted to compete until I got to high school where I could go to a school, snowboard half day, go to school half day. And uh, I fell in how love long, with competing. How long has it been an Olympic sport? The first time snowboarding was in the Olympics was in 1998, and I remember I was 14 years old, and I recorded it on a VHS tape, and I watched it after school one day, and I had one of those moments where I said, this is what I want to do with my life. The X Games probably boomed it, didn't it? Yeah, the X Games has been a, a, a really big element in the sport, you know, bringing us into people's uh, living rooms, essentially, for the last 15, you know, 16 years. It's been amazing to have that sort of exposure. I think snowboarding has been such a successful uh, Olympic sport because it's relatable, I think. You know, it's something that people are out there on the weekends doing with their families, and they get to watch it on the Olympics. How many on your team? There's eight on the U.S. halfpipe team, four and men, four women. Just made the cut um, late, huh? Yeah. The Why first so one. late? 
Uh, they want to make sure that the best team goes, that people are peaking right during the games. And the, the U.S. honestly has, um, you know, the deepest field of talent. There's the most talented snowboarders here in the States, and making the U.S. team is ultra competitive. And so they put us through a kind of rigorous um, qualification process. So kind of by the time we get to Sochi, we're, we're firing by the time we get what there. What can we expect from the Americans? Uh, I think we're going to see some of the, the best um, snowboarding we've seen. We've got Sean White, um, Danny Davis, uh, Greg Bretz, Taylor Gold, a young kid. And then there's uh, two rookies on the team as well, Caitlin Farrington, Ariel Gold, uh, Hannah Teeter, and myself. So we have some of the best snowboarders in the world going. Internationally, who's the toughest competition? <clears throat> um, I would say the Japanese team has some of the strongest riders that we've seen. Uh, China's right behind them as well. So I, I would say between the U.S. and Japan and China, that'll be who shakes up the medals. Nobody from Europe, the Alps, though they don't do that, is, hasn't caught on yet? Um, ski racing is pretty big in Europe, and snowboarding's been widely accepted, but it hasn't gained as much traction as it has in the States or as in Japan. You say 30, that's old for snowboarding. You think you can gold medal this year? I hope I can gold medal this year. I, I know there's a big difference between being prepared and, and having potential, and, and I'm more prepared than I've ever been, and I still have my potential. And, um, you know, I, I think more so than anything at this point in my career, I don't, have, I don't have anything to prove to people. I'm not looking to go to the Olympics to arrive or be defined by them. Um, I'm simply going to go and see if I have what it takes. So if you're going to go for it, the Olympics is the time to do it, and I'm ready. Next, Kelly takes us back to the beginning of her illustrious snowboarding career and finding God. Stay with us. We're back with Kelly Clark, the most accomplished snowboarder in history. She made the U.S. team at age 16 and won the first Olympic gold at 18. Was it too much too soon, maybe? Uh, maybe. You know, I, I had accomplished everything I ever dreamed of by the time I was 18 years old and I don't think people find themselves in that position after a lifetime of living let alone so by the I'm time told there was some depression set in after um I I guess I had the idea that when you're successful it goes along hand in hand with being fulfilled and being happy and um, I guess I was snowboarding the prove to myself who I was and find that identity and I guess um, it was a bit empty after that for me you you were not a religious person, right? Up to I didn't grow up in a religious home, and um, to be honest, at that point in my life, I never had um, questioned anything about God. I'd never even been to church before a day in my life, and so how did you find him? Um, you know, I was kind of just going through the motions. I think from an outside perspective, people would would say, "I'm living the dream." Every kid wants to be a pro snowboarder, wants to be a pro athlete, and I had it made, and, and I'm thankful for those opportunities. I wouldn't trade them for anything, those experiences. But um, you know, I honestly was writing in my journal one day about how you know I, I didn't, I wasn't too interested in waking up the next day, and I didn't think anybody cared about me, and I didn't care about myself. And pretty depressed. Very depressed. It's very depressed. And I actually, I had a snowboard contest that day. I went out, I qualified for finals, and. I was standing at the bottom of the pipe and I overheard um, some girls talking and one of them was crying and they said to the other one, just to get them to laugh, they said, hey, it's all right, God still loves you. And for me, you know, there was something about that statement that stirred something in me that I couldn't deny. So I ended up going back to my hotel room because I figured there's Bibles in all hotel rooms. And, um, you know, I, I was like, you know, if, if God loves this person, maybe God would love me. Maybe that's something to my life that would give me that fulfillment that would give me that sense of significance. I think that, you know, as humans, we're created to be significant. And I was looking for it everywhere, and I just didn't find it. And, um, you know, I ended up talking to that girl who made the comment and later that day, and she said, hey, you know, <clears throat> it's not about being religious. It's about having a relationship with God. And so that day, I started a relationship with God. I started a journey of, of starting to separate my identity from what I did to finding out who I was. Did you join any particular faith? Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian. And, uh, what church do you go to? I go to a lighthouse church in Mammoth Lakes, California. That's my home church. And Is that a Protestant? Um, it's non-denominational. So it's uh, bottom line is we believe in Jesus, and that's pretty much it for us. Do you get any backlash when you become openly religious? 
Uh, <clears throat> it was an interesting transition for me, for sure. Um, you know, I, I don't think people quite knew what to, what to think. I think when you hear about religion, you have stereotypes that you think of. And, you know, as I began to live my life and as I began to have my actions support what it was I believed to be true, and as my friends saw me from going to depressed to actually being happy, um, <clears throat> it was well received. I think regardless if you agree with people, if they actually do what they say they believe to be true, um, it's admirable. And Was the transition quick? You went back to the hotel, you started to read the Bible? I, I took, to be honest, I, I've never been one to jump into things quickly. You know, I think it looks like we're risk takers on our snowboards, but I think in reality we're calculated risk takers. And I took about six months of kind of just exploring that and reading and talking to people. Questioning. And trying to understand and get an idea for who God was. And, and um, by the end of those six months, I had come to the cl conclusion that God was real and that he loved me. And in that love, he therefore, you think he's with you all the time? Yes. Protecting you? Sure. So if you get hurt, if you fall, you don't blame him if he's protecting you as he failed? I don't look to my circumstances to determine what I believe to be true about God. I don't look to my circumstances to determine what kind of choices I make. I think people, um, you know, I want to happen to life. I don't want life to happen to me. Uh, I live from values. I live from principles, and I live from faith. And that's, you want a family someday? Uh, yeah, definitely. Are you going with anybody? Uh, no, I'm not. Looking for somebody? <laughs> uh, eventually, yes. <laughs> Some other areas. Uh, there are a lot of concerns about security in Sochi. Are you concerned? Uh, I'm not concerned about security in Sochi. I know there's been a lot in the news. Um, it's been my Olympic experience that, uh, you know, we're very well protected as athletes at the games. I went to the Salt Lake City Games uh, right after 9-11, and uh, I've never seen so much security, but I think they're capable of handling it. Uh, is this your last Olympics? Uh, I think I'll cross that bridge when I get there. I'm not sure yet. I'm pretty tunnel vision at the moment. We have some social media questions for you. Mer right. Merba1 on Twitter wants to know what the Kelly Clark Foundation is all about. I started the Kelly Clark Foundation four years ago, and uh, basically we aim at helping youth be successful through snowboarding. Uh, we want to break down the financial barriers and, and create access to the sport. So we fund high school competitive athletes and um, underserved youth through other snow-related nonprofits. And over the last four years, we've given out $65,000 in grants and scholarships to kids all across the U.S. and helped out over 100 kids, getting them out on the hill and starting them on snowboard. And for me, I guess I got to a point in my career where I've, I had been very successful and very well accomplished, but I thought, you know, whose benefit is it apart from my own if that's all I leave? I want to make sure that the snowboarding culture and the sport of snowboarding is better because I was a part of it, and that's why I started the foundation. Allison Joyful, Jan 18, tweets, how does Kelly's spirituality affect her career and life in the snowboarding community? I think for me, um, it's really the anchor of, of who I am. It's, it's where I draw my inspiration from. It's, it's essentially allowed me to enjoy snowboarding more than I ever have. I think, you know, becoming a Christian and, and walking with God, I think it's, it's been um, more liberating and brought more freedom and more enjoyment to my career. I'm not snowboarding to prove to people who I am. Uh, I get to snowboard because I love it. One other, Yveski on Instagram wants to know what you think about the Olympics being in Sochi. Um, it's, I think it's cool. You know, I got to go to Russia last year. I got to check out the venue, and um, I love that the Olympics can bring the world together. I love that there's something that, um, you know, there's so many things we can pick apart or disagree on, but it's amazing to have something that really unites us, and no better place to have that than Russia. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks to our guest, Kelly Clark. We'll be rooting for Kelly and all her teammates during the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.